Good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome and thank you for joining us. My name is Dr. Felita Lewis, Executive Director for Family and Community Engagement. And I have the pleasure of being one of your moderators for the day, along with Mrs. Angela Fullwood, Supervisor also from Family and Community Engagement. So today, students, you will hear a live read aloud from our very own City of Tampa Mayor. How exciting and how cool is that? Mayor Castor is reading, I Believe I Can, written by Grace Byers and illustrated by Katura A. Bobo. And that happens to be one of my favorite books. I Believe I Can is an affirmation for boys and girls of every background to love and believe in themselves. We will have time for your questions and comments after the mayor's reading. So please feel free to add your comments or your questions in the Q&A pane for our interactive discussion. So let's talk about who is Mayor Jane Castor. Next slide, please. Mayor Jane Castor is the 30, I'm sorry, is the 59th mayor of the city of Tampa. Born and raised in Tampa, Mayor Castor has spent a lifetime in service to the community, first as a police officer, then as Tampa's first female chief of police. Check that out, the first female chief of police, and finally as the city's 59th mayor. She graduated from Chamberlain High School and attended the University of Tampa on an athletic scholarship. Under her leadership, the, Tampa, the city of Tampa has also received several awards and recognitions. So without any further delay, we will now hear from our very own Mayor Jane Castor. Well, good after or good morning, everybody. It's so exciting to be here. Before we get started, I just wanted to introduce for those who haven't met. Uh, this is Dessa, Alicadessa, which means female mayor, and she is our office dog. So she just wanted to stop by and say hey to everybody before we get started. And she goes off and takes her first nap of the day. All right. Well, I'm very, very excited to to uh, be here today and to be able to read this book. I believe I can by Grace Byers. So I don't know my uh, there we go. I believe I can. I can sail like mighty ships like the oceans. I run deep. I can stretch just like the Alps until I reach my highest peak. I can charge just like a train, like a rocket I'll ignite. Like a star, I can project my brightest shine against the night. I am like the lion's roar. I am like a dragon's flames. I'm worthy because I'm me and there is value in my name. I can build just like a brick. I keep going like a clock. I can hold just like cement. I can last just like a rock. Grounded firm, I'm like the soil, like the sky, I'm boundless too. When I believe in myself, there's simply nothing I can't do. Like the hero, I'm brave and face my fears despite my fright because I know I'm not alone and in the end, I'll be all right. Sometimes I'm right, sometimes I'm wrong, but even when I make mistakes, I learn from them to make me strong.
I may not win at all I do, I may experience defeat. But I'll just, just dust off and try again to be the best that I can be. I know my power lies within. There's nothing that can hold me down. There is light within my smile. There is voice within my sound. My presence matters in this world. My life is worthy. There's a plan. I know I can do anything. If only I believe I can. All right, let's talk about that book. If anybody has any questions or any comments. Thank you, Mayor. Um, this story is definitely an affirmation of every child's inherent self worth and potential. Um, my name is Angela Fullwood and I will be sharing all of your questions with the mayor today. So go ahead and start typing in those questions. We'll start off with this one. Um, can being that you have accomplished so much being the first female police chief in the city of Tampa and never leaving the city. You know, sometimes you hear about having no honor within your own hometown. Um, could you share with uh, the students what or who empowered you to believe in yourself? I think it was really my parents. You know, I'm one of five children and we were raised um, never told that we couldn't do anything you know sports i was involved in sports as a as a young child and um, was never told that i couldn't do that that sports were for boys the only expectation was that whatever you did you had to give it 110 percent so i would have to say um, my family has always uh, given me confidence and then also learning being involved in sports I learned a lot of life skills there and continued to build uh, my confidence through sports as well. Awesome, thank you for that. The next question is, when did you believe that you could become a mayor? <laughs> well, I wasn't really sure about that. You know, some people, they, they take different routes to things. Um, so becoming a police officer, I did that so I could serve my community. But what's interesting is the, the more you move through the ranks, you know, as a police officer, the less you get to be out there helping people every day out on the streets. So that was a little unique uh, going up to the position of, of chief of police, but, you know, quite an honor for me. And then running for mayor, it really was in conversations with the previous mayors that I knew very well. And we have such an incredible future and opportunity here in the next um, seven, eight years that I just wanted to be a part of that again, a part of serving our community and a part of lifting the city of Tampa up and making sure that everybody uh, gets to to share in the, the prosperity that we're going to realize here in the community. So I don't know if it was so much about the position of mayor, just the the opportunity to be involved in our city and in our community again and to help serve. Thank you so much. And there are several classes. There's a kindergarten class um, and they want to know what exactly does a mayor do? Well, I, I thought you were going to say they just want to see Dessa, uh, the office dog again. Um, well, what a mayor does, it's, there's quite a variety. So what is very, very important is that you have a good team around you. And so I have a very, very good team that looks at a lot of different uh, areas. But I do things like cut ribbons for new businesses. That's one of my favorite things going out and talking to classes, talking to young people, 
Um, that's also one of my favorite things to do. But we work on all kinds of issues, transportation, you know, how people get to and from places, um, housing, making sure everybody has a comfortable and safe place to live, uh, working on workforce development, making sure that everybody has the skills they need to have a good job. So we just have a lot of things to do every day. Uh, last week was one of the most exciting days when we got to have a boat parade when our Buccaneers won the Super Bowl. So every day is different and I love that. But uh, and every day is a challenge too, but um, it's exciting. I can't wait to get up every day and come to work. The next question is from um, Rampello K8. Um, one of the students would like to know how you became a police chief. Mm. Well, Rampello is right down the street. Uh, Dessa and I have been down there many, many times. Um, so how you become the chief of police is that uh, you are appointed by the mayor. So there are different forms of governments in cities and we have uh, a strong mayor form of government and then we have a city council that does like the rules and policies and things, but the mayor runs the city. So the mayor gets to decide who the police chief is and who the fire chief is. And so it was Mayor Pam Iorio who appointed me as the uh, chief of police. And I was in that position for six years. OK, and um, this comes from Ms. Williams's class. She said, thank you for the great book. What was your favorite subject in school? Well, my favorite subject in school <laughs> was phys ed. Uh, no, I, I really, you know, for me, sports has always just been something, even now, I'm 61 years old and I still get up every morning and exercise and, and ride my Peloton, clearly not as fun as playing basketball or those kinds of things. But I always enjoyed, I enjoyed history, I enjoyed um, science. Um, frankly, I never inherited the math gene. Uh, my two brothers, my older brother and my younger brother and my older sister are very, very good at math and um, nobody wants me uh, adding up their numbers. But uh, I really enjoy history and science as well. And, and literature reading um, was something that was always a passion for me as well. So I, I just like to be learning every day. This is from a student in second grade at Lowry Elementary, Ms. Altmer's class. Um, the student says, so this book is telling me that if I think I can do anything, I really can? Mm -hmm. Yes, and that is true. And really what I've found in young people is you have the ability, you have the, the intellect, you have the knowledge, you have the skill, you have the motivation that you want to do something. You just have to believe in yourself. And so that's um, that's very important is to have that confidence. Next question comes from Gory Elementary, Miss Marcy's fourth grade class. What was a challenge that you remember facing as a child in school? Well, I think uh, something I had the I had the the um, privilege of going to school, you know, from first grade all the way through twelfth grade with mostly the same kids, so I really knew everybody that that uh, I went to school with. But I think the biggest challenge was, you know, making sure you were doing the right thing. Sometimes you have peer pressure where other kids try to talk you into doing the wrong thing, but um, Probably sometimes it was difficult to, you know, to be responsible and to own your decisions and, and to make those the right decisions. Sometimes that's hard because you get a lot of pressure from other people uh, to do things that may not be right. So what I always did, I always tell people I try to simplify my life by doing the right thing for the right reason. And um, that that makes things a little bit easier.
Okay, right. we have a. I think we might have lost. <laughs> um, we have a couple more questions. These are kind of the same. Um, how did you learn your rights to make you strong? Um, and what were the skills you needed to become the mayor? Mm -hmm. Well, you there are a lot of different skills uh, to become the mayor. I think the most important is the same one, the most important skill in being a police officer. And I think many of you will find the most important skill in your life too is listening, listening to people and not just listening so that you can form a response to what somebody's saying. Really listen to what people have to say and ask them questions about themselves. I think quite often that um, prejudice and discrimination come from ignorance and not from ignorance not defined as people that aren't very smart. It's more just not having an understanding of where other people are coming from. And that's one that's one of um, the, the, the elements that brings me such joy about our young people today and even my kids. My kids are 21 years old now, but when they were little is that there's really, um, you know, everybody comes together in our community. We're a very diverse community and everyone comes together and that's what makes Tampa such a beautiful place to live in is that we embrace that diversity and we celebrate that diversity and it makes us so much stronger as a community when everyone is con included and everyone's voice is heard. Awesome, thank you. And I want to ask, this comes from this a second grade class, one of the e-learners at Twin Lakes Elementary, and an e-learner from Booker T. Washington, Miss Robinson's class. Um, um, the second grader would like to know what is the best part of your job as mayor, and from the um, from Miss Robinson's class, the student wants to know what was the one of the most difficult things you've ever had to do. Yeah, the um, the best thing of best part of my job is really everything. It's uh, every day is something different. And as I said, um, I like to open new businesses that are coming down, uh, coming to our city. Uh, going out and meeting young students is one of my favorite, favorite, favorite activities because you all are the future of the city. And so to hear about your dreams and your desires and your plans is something that always really motivates me. And I think the downside of being the mayor is that you don't have enough time to do everything you want to do. You know, no matter how early you start or how late you go home, um, there's never enough time in the day to do it all. But uh, that's I think really that's a good problem to have. So it's an exciting job and I'm very, very honored to be in this position. Um, this is another um, question from um, Booker T. Washington Elementary, Ms. Robinson's class, and she calls it Ms. Robinson's brilliant e-learner. So um, this question is, how do you plan to help the homeless? Would you consider providing housing for the homeless? Yeah, that's a great question. So. I don't want to be too boring, but the county, so the city of Tampa is in Hillsborough County and Hillsborough County has responsibility for a lot of the social issues, you know, helping homeless, helping people with addiction issues. And so we give that the county money um, to address homeless, but the, the issue is mostly inside the city of Tampa. So there is a program over in Pinellas. It's called Pinellas Hope. And we are going to start a program here. Hopefully, we had hoped by January. Now we're hoping by uh, the beginning of April to have it up and running where we will be able to serve up to 300 individuals who are homeless. And we will, we will have a site that everyone will be at and we'll have wraparound services there. So they'll be able to get counseling that they need. Uh, we can help them find jobs. We can help them get all their documents and really help them on that road to becoming productive members of our community once again. So we intend to, to get that up and running 
by the end of, of uh, March, beginning of April. We've already got the land designated for it and we're just bringing in all the services. So that's a great question. All right, the next question is, how did Dessa become a part of your team? <laughs> so I love dogs. I love cats too, but I'm allergic to cats. And so I thought, you know, wouldn't it be great to have uh, an office dog that people could come here to visit and she would greet them and I could take her to different places. And so I talked to my friends at the Humane Society. I actually, if you guys promise not to tell anybody, I actually have three other rescue dogs from the Humane Society. And so at first I thought maybe my assistant who doesn't have a dog would take Dessa or the office dog home with her. And she said, oh, I don't think so. So now I have four rescue dogs. Come here, Dessa, do. But anyway, they brought Dessa in. So I said, come on, girl. So I said, bring her in for a test drive. And so they brought her in and she loves everybody, but she's a little bit cranky with other dogs. I think she's a little bit jealous, but, uh, and a little protective. But she came in and everybody loves her. She just jumps up in people's laps and takes a nap and, she goes out and wags her tail and licks everybody that comes in to visit. But uh, I bring her whenever I go to schools. I always bring her to schools because she she loves she can have 20, 30 kids around pet her head and she's just in heaven. So that's Dessa. I think she's going to run for mayor next and I'm going to be her assistant. She's very <laughs> popular. That's cool. All right, Miss Amaro's class wants to know what sport did you play in college? I played uh, basketball and volleyball and um, just for for everybody just really quickly what was the key for me um, was title IX. title nine came out when I was in junior high school and it says a lot of things but really what it said was that young girls had the same opportunity to play organized sports as young boys did and as a result of that, I played all through junior high and high school, a number of different sports. And then because I one, I'm six foot tall, which used to be tall back then. And I grew up around all boys. So I, I used to be a pretty good athlete. But um, anyway, that resulted in a full athletic scholarship to University of Tampa, which was really the key that opened up all the doors of opportunity for me. My family, five children, uh, my dad was a cabinet maker and so there really wasn't money for college so that was that was really the opportunity of a lifetime for me and i made a promise at that time that i would spend the rest of my life helping other young people because somebody helped me and gave me a chance and um and it, it really resulted in me accomplishing everything that i have accomplished being here as the mayor i wouldn't have done that had it not been for that opportunity Awesome. Miss Cole's class from Woodson K-8 um, asks, um, what positive affirmation would help motivate their class every day? They, I guess they want some positive affirmations from you or what would you say to motivate them? Well, what I would say is believe in yourself. I think that that, that is uh, the most important. You know, you, you have to believe in yourself and have confidence in yourself to be able to accomplish um, all that you, you have the ability to accomplish. Uh, another thing that I would, I would say along those lines of, of being confident is uh, learning to be a good listener and also above all else, is choosing to be kind. There are a lot of things we have so many choices in life, but I think the most important one is to be kind every single day. I used to tell my my boys when they were young, I would tell them to be kind to the bullies that were were in class because there's probably something in their lives, you know, that something's happening at their house that's causing them to to act in that way. So you know, always choose to be kind and to listen to others. But most importantly, believe in yourself and know that you can accomplish anything you set your mind to. OK, our next question is we heard that you graduated from Chamberlain High School, but the students and Miss B, um, I think 
Miss Bailey's um, at Gory Elementary third grade class would like to know what other schools did you attend when you were little? Okay, I went to Lake Magdalene Elementary and then I went to Buchanan Junior High. Well, then I went to um, Young Junior High School and then I went to Buchanan Junior High School. That's when they were called junior high schools way back when. And then I went to Chamberlain uh, High School. I'm so ancient that uh, high school was just 10, 11 and 12th grade. So I'm like almost I'm I'm right above the dinosaurs in in being prehistoric. All right, a uh, student from Lowry Elementary first grade class and Miss Chestnut's first grade class that is wanted to know we we heard about your sports but they wanted to know how did you get into sports like what did was there something that you saw a talent that you saw or did you just try everything um give us a little uh insight on that yeah we i grew up out in what used to be the country out in north tampa and on a little lane there were maybe eight houses and most of the kids on on the lane were um, young boys and that's all we did every single day. We were out. I mean, you got called in at dinner time when the sun went down and we played baseball, football. My dad, um, my dad was an athlete. And so he, uh, he put a basketball court in our backyard. So all the kids hung out at our house and uh, my dad made a ping pong table out of a piece of plywood and you know, those kind of things. We just played baseball in an empty uh, lot across from our house. So we just kind of made do with the, the things that we had. And so uh, that's really how I was got involved and interested in, in athletics. And it really was great. People learn life skills in different places. But for me, it was really out there on the on the courts and out on the fields. The the idea of, of fairness of commitment, of um, hard work, you know, uh, ability to win and lose gracefully. I don't know if I ever got the losing part down. Uh, teamwork, you know, all those things are important in life. All right, well, we don't have time for any more questions, so thank you for that. At this time, I'm going to turn it over to the organizer of this spectacular event. Her name is Deborah Blossom. She's the department manager of community engagement. Mrs. Blossom. All right, thank you so much. Um, how exciting this was. Thank you, Mayor. I love the reading, the reminder for all of us to believe that we can. Um, no matter how young or how old we are. Um, my biggest takeaway, I love, 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 and I will remind myself of this daily, um, choose to be kind. Um, that's that's the easiest thing we can do, is just choose to be kind. So thank you for that, and thank you for your kindness and being here with us. Thank you, Dr. Lewis and um, Mrs. Fulward for uh, moderating, but most importantly, thank you to the students and the teachers for your participation. We hope you enjoyed the presentation and have a great day. Thank you all. Happy Black History Month. That's a good time. Thank you. Thank you, Captain.